Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Vivian from the Paper Letter Blog and today I'm going to show you how to make a super simple envelope flip book. Now I say super simple but of course you can make this as big or as small as you like. I'm gonna make one out of three envelopes but you could do four or five or two or I don't know. You could do many, you could do a lot of decorations or keep it kind of simple and that's kind of the fun of an envelope flip book now to start making an envelope flip book we're first going to need envelopes I'm gonna make my own but you could also use um, pre-made envelopes of course if you don't know or if you don't have envelopes or if you don't know how to make them I have a, a video on that called how to make envelopes I show you three ways you can use the tool I'm using which is an envelope punch board or you can use other tools or templates or um, there's multiple ways with or without fancy crafting tools now what I did is something kind of risky I punched and made uh, three papers into envelopes in one go because I whenever I do three individual ones for some reason they turn out different sizes but now that I made them all three exactly at the same time um, they turned out the same size uh, the only thing is that of course the, the punch doesn't really like going through three going through three papers at once so that's difficult to pronounce um, <clears throat> but yeah that uh, that's just a little something so here we are making the envelopes and what I'm also doing now is I am adding um, I'm creating a notch I think it is called and basically that means that instead of one fold line I create two so that you have a little bit of extra space for folding I don't think I can have that make any more sense you just have to look at your envelope and see when you make the envelope flip book if they fold nicely or if you need a little bit of extra space but yeah like I said I cannot really explain that that just depends on how thick your paper is or how much goodies you want to put in and that's something I had to figure out for myself so I'm sure you guys can figure it out as well um, but basically what you do to make them fold a little bit easier is Kind of above the first fold line you create a second fold line so that you have a bit of extra space i hope that makes sense and that's me like folding it multiple times just to see if i'm satisfied oh before i get questions the papers the six by six papers are from a little paper pad i got from action which is a local dollar store and all of the washi tape stickers i own are from aliexpress i have a huge amount of washi tape stickers because they're kind of <laughs> something i love collecting um but um yeah of course you could use any type of decoration you like Apart from the Aliexpress goodies, I always try to link the things I've used, such as the envelope punch board. Then, I decided to make this um, envelope flipbook a little bit vintage themed because my patrons over on Patreon uh, said that they liked vintage themed meal, so I thought I would include another one. I already made this quite a while ago just never finished it and sent it out because that's the way I roll I will start working on something for a while and then I lose creativity or I feel like I don't know how to finish it and then it'll take me weeks to get back to it but I finally sent it out I'm not gonna say to whom because I'm afraid it might not have arrived yet but hopefully soon um, so I decided to go for a vintage theme is what I was going to tell you because the papers have a little bit of a vintage feel and then some of the washi tape stickers as well and I of course have a ton of things I can use um, together with those goodies so what you see me use is vintage papers simply uh, used uh, <laughs> a very old um, yeah secondhand books that I tore pages from uh, for decorating and then I'm also using stamps and then what you saw me distress just now is a page I have an old typewriter long story short I have an old typewriter and I used that to type out little words and little sentences and stuff like letter for you or note or happy meal or smile you know kind of like cute little sentences and I typed that out onto some white cardstock and then I cut them up and now I have tiny word sentences things that I can use for crafting the only thing is 
to go with the vintage theme I used um, a distress oxide I think the color is called Victorian velvet it's kind of like a lilac -y purple pinkish purple color and I use that to color in the edges of the sentences because that would make it look like blend in a little bit more because I also use a purplish um, washi type so to kind of give everything a matching look I don't know I'm not capable of forming normal sentences today because I had work I'm editing this at very last moment because I didn't have time yesterday because my parents came over and my younger brother came over and we went out for dinner right after my work shift so I didn't have as much time to work on editing this video as I would like but of course I'm still going to try and finish it somewhat on time so probably it's a little bit late but we will see um, I hope you guys understand that that's not because I don't want to work on the videos it's just because I'm sometimes a little bit late also I want to apologize for my head bobbing in and out of the frame I keep trying to tell myself that I shouldn't lean forward too much it just happens automatically because I want to look at my project a little bit better and yeah <clears throat> I hope it's not too annoying <laughs> I keep coughing in between that's not because I'm sick like coughing nowadays is a very easily cause for concern but I'm not sick I just make myself a big mug of ginger tea but this time I didn't do like the slices of a ginger I did grated ginger because someone said that that's better and of course it makes sense because then you actually ingest the pieces of ginger instead of just the tea made from it but because that's so strong I added like a teaspoon of honey and of course those two in combination coat your throat so I keep coughing and like scraping <laughs> my throat because uh, the honey is like making it difficult for me to form sentences <laughs> Just wanted to let you know I'm okay. Um, the reason why I'm drinking super strong ginger tea is because I have been feeling a little bit under the weather, but that's not health related. It's just a combination of working a lot and then temperatures going from heat wave to almost fall temperatures. Like it's around 14 degrees colder now than it was a week and a half ago. So I think my body is just like, what is going on? <laughs> so uh, I'm doing okay. I just need a little bit of extra uh, Extra something um, Yeah, you can see on screen. I have a Billion things I'm using to decorate. I have vintage stamps, which I love using Don't worry. I share a lot of them with my old neighbor who is the collector, but These he already has so I can just keep the ones he already has and then I'll share the more special ones with him either for his collection or for him to trade and then other goodies I'm using are um, I have an, a little baggie on the left that I fill with I don't know what brand they are I'm sorry I couldn't tell you that but people from the USA <laughs> very often send me these chipboard die cuts that have a vintage look to them so you have the flowers you have the butterflies I don't know if they're the same brand but they have like the same thickness the same look to them so I collected all of them in a, a little baggie I'm using some of those of course I'm using stamped images the love of my wooden stamps and then I'm also using a couple of vintage book butterfly cutouts I have a pen pal who sometimes um, he, who's very good at thrift shopping so she collects a lot of um, butterfly images because I used to love working with them I still do I just forget I have them and then I also purchased a couple from her because I simply wanted a big stash for me to use I very often forget I have them but um, I thought they would um, make this project a bit more cohesive so I have little things that I make kind of come back in every envelope I have the little purple collar slash washi tape strip I have repeated uh, the vintage music paper or vintage book pages and then I'm also repeating the vintage butterflies and the stamped images and the washi tape stickers so I try to make little things come back so that instead of it being three individual envelopes it looks like one cohesive project now another thing I'm doing now 
is I am uh, using acrylic paint to once again make everything a bit more cohesive so all of the envelopes get I don't know how you would call that like a smudge of white paint or a stripe of, of white paint and the reason especially why I wanted to do that to the top envelope is because the print is so busy I didn't know how to break it up and I didn't know where to place some um, decorations because it's kind of difficult to find the spot for decorations on such a busy print so I decided to yeah make a start by adding a little white stripe so that's just simple dollar store acrylic paint nothing special but yeah, I like using that every now and then another another thing I want to talk to you about uh, envelope flip books because I don't do these often enough they're like one of the simplest flip books to make and you can fill them with goodies and still spend a lot of time on decorating uh, is of course the layout I did a vertical layout so envelopes on above each other but you can also do a horizontal layout so that they go sideways instead of down up I don't know that didn't make a whole lot of sense but I think just allow yourself to play around with layouts from things because I very often get stuck on the same thing I would always make a horizontal layout for example and then I saw someone do a vertical envelope flip book and I was like why did I not think of that <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to let you think about that for a second what I'm doing here is distress oxide I think I had that distress distress oxide new like literally that day or the day before so I was excited to use it for my vintage looking project that is a distress oxide that's called tea dye and of course it's the perfect color for making these bright white pages look a little bit more aged <laughs> so I'm using that again uh, to decorate the background a little bit now I'm also decorating the top flap of that envelope and the reason why was because I thought the receiver could hang it up if she wanted to of course no pressure but you could very easily hang this up and then use it as like storage or tea something something I don't know um, <clears throat> that's just a quick look but don't worry at the end of this video you'll get a better look so I'm using that uh, that's just one idea but of course I'm not gonna tell someone how to use my meal this is me going through all of my lap here papers and picking one again kind of purple color colored one uh, with a typewriter on it which I thought was perfect and I am going to put that behind a piece of vintage um, music note paper because I don't like it when you can already see the letter so I'm just using that to hide the letter from plain sight I don't know then of course this flip book is made out of envelopes so I could just have filled the envelopes with goodies but I wanted to keep everything together um, so I found some other envelopes that I thought would look nice the only thing is again that white and black polka dot envelope is very bright while I wanted the look of this to be vintage so I thought I would use again the same tea dye distress oxide to make it look a little bit more aged and I actually quite like how that looks um, so I am just uh, yeah basically uh, distressing or coloring in that envelope and the the tool I have in my hand it's going quite fast is actually a makeup brush like a foundation brush or I don't know I never ever use brushes like that for the way they are supposed to be used I just use them for crafting but they're quite nice to use in combination with distress oxides I'm filling that a little baggie with washi tape stickers because as you can see I have a huge supply and I love using them I know many people love using them even though they're kind of frustrating to use because they're quite difficult to peel but I just thought I would uh, share a few um yeah <laughs> so there's that i really hope this uh, video gives you some ideas i'm also trying to pay more attention to goodies i mean i always include goodies but usually i'll skip i don't really talk about them in the videos uh, but i know uh, i kind of underestimated how much people actually liked knowing 
what to include and in all honesty I struggle with that as well like when I have uh, six places to put goodies I'll f kind of freak out like how am I gonna what am I gonna include so what I'm including as well is a magpie bag I love making magpie bags that's not an official name that's just the name I gave the bag it's basically an envelope or a baggie filled with random things <laughs> and they're really fun to make Another thing I'm doing is, of course, including washi tape samples. I chose um, the purple, purple lilac washi that I also used throughout this project, as well as one with butterflies on it because that really matched my project. And then I um, put both of the samples uh, in a little glassine slash vellum envelope. This is the magpie bag. I'm filling it with so many different things from vintage cutouts to handmade wax seal stamps, which I love including. Um, if you want to use them, people often ask me like, how do you use them? You can just glue them on your project or stick them in a journal, or you can even glue them onto an envelope as long as you remember to use a good type of glue because otherwise they'll fall off along the way. Um, so yeah, that's a magpie bag. <laughs> I, uh, I call it a magpie bag because a magpie is a bird that collects pretty things. And that's kind of what I do. <laughs> Here we have a finished look. Ignore the mess around my table. That's just the way I work. <laughs> um, it's In the end, for me, it was a flat meal parcel to send because I didn't fold it like that. I actually folded it half instead of like that like I, I, I it's like two envelopes thick instead of three and then it was a flat meal parcel um, but you can of course fill them with as much or as little goodies as you like that's all up to you you can also I don't know I say I already said that you can add more envelopes if you like or less depending on the type of meal you're trying to make Okay, that is it for today's video. Uh, I talked a lot more than I planned to. I wanted to make this video kind of calm and talk in a calm way. I really hope that worked out that way. Um, yeah, and I, I hope I hope this inspired you in some way. If it did, don't forget to use the hashtag the paper letter blog. I love seeing what you guys make on Instagram. Um, and I will talk to you all again very soon. Have a lovely day. A big, big thank you to my patrons who help me uh, grow, who support my channel and help me make tough decisions sometimes. And I'll talk to you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.